So you bought a bag of sterile seed starting mix, but the reality is that it's likely not sterile. So you want to take it a step further. If you do this wrong, you're actually doing more harm than good, and it can harm the germination and the overall growth of the plant. So I'm going to show you the right methods to do this without harming the soil, without harming the plant. Now, total sterilization is most definitely a myth. It's not possible. And because of that, we don't want the goal to be total destruction. We just want it to be destruction of harmful pathogens. There is toxicity found when heating organic material. This includes coconut coir, peat moss, compost, worm castings, you name it. If you warm anything organic past the temperature it's designed to go to, or for the duration, past the duration it's supposed to go to, you will end up with heat induced toxicity of your soil. It's essentially caused by an accumulation of ammonium compounds, along with a couple other little mechanisms that go on, but regardless, it can be very detrimental to your plants. Now, an overheated soil does not mean it's garbage. It can and recover. It's going to take about two to three weeks for it to do so. So if you use it prior to that, it's going to affect your germination and ultimately your seedlings. The second thing you're going to notice when you have a heat treated soil is molds. Now you're probably thinking, Ashley, I thought we're killing those off. You're not killing off all of them. These are called burnt ground molds. And because a lot of the products we're using when we're gardening come from forests, whether it's coconuts or peat moss, they have these burnt mold fungi present, which ultimately colonize on the tops of your soil. Now these molds are not harmful to plants and the adequate, like the one university paper I read said it exactly like this, the adequate response to sterilization is just simply scraping it off the top, which I mean, people always try to sound super sophisticated when it comes to this sort of stuff. You're literally just going to scrape it off the top. However, you're going to see it because that's just very natural. And number three, do not, for the love of God, put compost, worm castings, or any sort of composty type stuff in a seed starting mix. That is an only meant for the plant when you're bumping the plant up to a seedling stage, past the seedling stage. Those seed germination stages, all that sort of stuff, do not use those in there. Not only do they have a ton of different pathogens in them, but there's also a lot of like plant chemicals in there for lack of a better term, like allelopathic chemicals that can affect the germination rate of your plant. So just back off on those until we get to a state where we have a couple leaves on board. So the first method is the oven method. I personally do not like this method because rehydrating this can be quite the nightmare. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take four inches of soil or less, no more than that, and spread it out on a baking sheet or inside of a Pyrex dish, and you're going to cover it with aluminum foil. You're then going to heat the oven to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and stick that soil in there. You never want to exceed 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to heat it at this rate for about two minutes. Now, this means you're probably going to need some sort of a thermometer to stick in the soil because you need not the outside of the soil to be heated to that degree, you need the inside of that soil to be heated to that degree. So you need some sort of a thermometer in there to tell you when you hit 180 and then allow you to only go to two minutes at 180 and then you quickly pull it out. If you go over that two minute mark, you again run the risk of that heat toxicity. Number two, I think this is the coolest way. It's using a pressure canner. So what you want to do again, only four inches of soil in little mason jars, for example. After that, you're going to literally follow the same rules you would follow if you were to pressure can something. The one thing that you want to make sure is that there's tin foil over top of the cups themselves. You're going to put about four inches of water in the bottom of the pressure canner, pop that lid on and allow it to vent. Once it starts venting, you're going to put a 10 pound weight on it and allow her to rip for about 15 minutes. After that is done, you can simply pull everything off and I would do like a quick gas off version of it within reason. You don't want to break any jars, of course, and then that will allow you to get in there sooner so you know for sure it's not going to overcook it. Method number three is is a steam method. Now this would work great with a water bath canner that has one of those grates. What you want to do is put about four inches of water in the bottom, put your soil again, four inches inside of a mason jar, tin foil on top. You're going to place the jars inside of that basket with the lid on top. And then you're simply going to bring that water up to a boil and allow it to boil for 30 minutes, 30 minutes inside of there. And then you're going to pull it all out again. Another great way to do the sterilization process. And the last way is solar film. So you could use a 
construction, clear construction bag for this, contractor's bag for this. You could use anything like that that allows you to solarize that soil. The time you allow this to happen for, and this is kind of one that not, I mean, it's not 110% because the time you allow this to happen for will completely depend on the intensity in the sun, the ambient temperatures. I mean, there's so many factors that go into this. So it's really difficult for me to say, leave it for one day or leave it for the, it's just, it's impossible. But solarization is another way to help treat uh, a soil and sterilize it fully. Now keep in mind, soil sterilization is not the only thing you can do when it comes to sterilizing for seed starting. You can actually sterilize the seeds themselves. And I have a video on that, so I suggest you go check that out. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.